Actress Nicole Kidman is from the world's skin cancer capital, Australia. But she's not likely to become a victim. From childhood on, she has pretty much avoided the sun. That's been great for her skin, but could leave her vitamin D deficient. That wouldn't be a good thing. Low vitamin D can make people susceptible to winter germs, summer colds, diabetic afflictions, and a wide range of cancers. The latest research finds nearly the entire population has less than optimum levels. So, to sun or not to sun? That is the question. And if so, how much? Enough is enough to make vitamin D. <laughs> um, too much is a sunburn. Um, uh, and the way we can utilize the sun is to work it into our lifestyle. Dr. James Dowd, author of The Vitamin D Cure, says that could simply mean leaving our desks for lunch in the sun or a brief walk outdoors. Many doctors prefer supplements and are concerned talk of increasing time in the sun could lead to higher cancer rates. Jane Houlihan of the Environmental Working Group says you can be careful and still get a good dose. You wear a sunscreen, you'll be getting some of that sunlight is going to filter through your sunscreen. Um, 10 to 15 minutes of, in the sun, in fact, for most people, gives you enough vitamin D. And what's really important is to protect yourself from what's a known human carcinogen, UV radiation. But Dow disagrees, saying that may not make enough vitamin D. Though babies, children, and all those with fair skin need to be extremely careful. You want to go out without protection on for, for at least your 10 or 15 minutes for sort of the average person in a, in a southern latitude. In a northern latitude, it may actually be more like 30 minutes that you need in, in that uh, uh, environment to make enough vitamin D. So how can we be safe and healthy outdoors? First, let's start with some sunshine basics. Ultraviolet light from the sun consists of two parts. UVB forms vitamin D in the skin, but too much of it causes sunburn and damages the skin surface. UVA provides no benefit and makes the skin wrinkled and leathery. This damage can also lead to melanoma, the most deadly form of skin cancer. And UVA isn't just a summer thing. Unlike UVB, it's prominent year-round, even on cloudy days, and it passes right through most windows. Sunscreen has long been publicized as a safety shield against the bad rays, but it's not that simple. Most sunscreens have only been blocking the less dangerous UVB as measured by the SPF factor. UVA has no such standard measure and has been largely unblocked. The public assumed in blocking UVB alone they were safe. But in fact, the places where sunscreen became most popular were the same places where skin cancer increased. Australia, North America, and Scandinavia. The good news? More products are blocking UVA and UVB known as broad-spectrum protection. Even there, beware. Right now, there's no regulation at all for what broad-spectrum means, so manufacturers can print that on the label. It doesn't have to mean anything at all. In fact, the Food and Drug Administration has hardly any requirements. What we found in our research is that about half of the products on the market have ingredients that break down when they're in the sun, have ingredients that don't protect you across that whole spectrum of UV radiation that can damage your skin, or contain ingredients that can penetrate the skin, get into your blood, and pose other kinds of health risks. For instance, the common sunblocker oxybenzone absorbs into the bloodstream, raising concerns. For allergies, for cell damage, and has even been linked in a recent study to birth defects, a preliminary study. So it is an ingredient that we warn consumers that it's probably best to avoid. Given those dangers, what are safe and effective blockers? Houlihan says look for metallic blockers like titanium and zinc. She says many of the best products are from specialty companies. Those include Vanacream, Lavera, California Baby, and Solar RX. And major sunscreen brands are also featuring better products among their selections. Even if you don't block the sun, you can use supplements when you're low in vitamin D. In the vitamin D cure, the guideline for maintaining a good level is 25 units or IUs for every pound of weight. For a 200-pound man, that would be 5,000 units a day. For a 10-pound baby, a dose of 250 units daily is suggested. For babies and those who don't like pills, there are liquid varieties, such as this concentrated one available through healthcare providers or other options that can be ordered online. And have your vitamin D checked. For good health, you should be above 35. You might have a level in the 20s uh, in February or March when it's 60 in the summer. And so the more you're in, 
it out of doors and the further north you are, the greater those seasonal fluctuations are. Weaving your way through vitamin D and sun issues can be a little tricky. Just remember to protect your skin safely and to get enough vitamin D to protect your whole body. Galen Tethro, CBN News.